Hello, welcome to New Harvest Christian Fellowship, Manchester, England, and thank you for subscribing to our sermon podcast. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. We pray it will be a blessing to your life, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'll give you our contact information at the end of the recording. Thank you once again. Enjoy the preaching. Okay, well, praise God. Give yourselves a hand clap for coming out to church. Praise God. Good to be here with you uh, today. You may be wondering about these signs, you know, and they, they look kind of good. Our favorite thus far is we love this Aspire family. Uh, and we put these up here uh, because we wanted to show them off, but they're not for decoration here. What these are for, Pastor Dave got these. Give Pastor Dave a big hand clap for taking care of these. What these are for is for people to stand out in the car park when people come in. Could you imagine if you were coming in and you were a visitor, maybe it's your first time and someone's kind of flashing this at you. You might look at it first a little bit strange, but then you'd like, hey, that's cool. That would make you feel welcome. And so that's what all of these are about. You know, you made it, all of these things, because some people have a lot of trouble getting here and then they make it, yes. And so what we're looking for are people that would come a little bit early to church and would stand out and show this off to the people that walk in or the car park as they come in to drive in with their cars and kind of put a smile on your face. Now, if you're one of these bump on a log type of people that are just always frowning and like this, we don't need you for this job. But if you're a smiley person, you just can't help but smile. We need you. You are the one. And uh, some of our other churches have done this and found it to be really encouraging to the people that come. And so uh, young people can do it. Teenagers can do it. Um, No problem. So let us know if you're interested in that uh, because we don't want them just to be decorated. We want to use them like a tool to help and encourage people. So give Pastor Dave one more hand clap for doing that today. And another big thanks for coming out to church on Easter Sunday, the day that we celebrate Jesus' rise from the dead. So important, man, just so important. The Bible says if he has not risen, our faith is in vain. In other words, if he hasn't risen from the dead, don't even bother being a Christian. But if he has risen from the dead, Man, now we got to listen to him. He's more than a prophet. (laughs) He is a resurrected king. Can you say amen? So we are so grateful today to be able to uh, worship the Lord. And we want to help you with the word of God today and encourage you and and, and give you something that you can go and maybe you're going to have an Easter meal after something like that. Uh, you can begin to say, man, I'm fed spiritually, and now I'm going to eat my Easter meal as well. Praise God. Open your Bibles up to the book of Mark, the 16th chapter. Mark, chapter 16. It was about a month ago that uh, Greenpeace, an environmental uh, activist organization, uh, got hold of some massive granite boulders. And they went off the, in other places too, but in one place in particular in English Channel, uh, they begin to drop these big massive boulders into the uh, sea in order for them to be on the seabed to stop a particular kind of fishing that they uh, say uh, is harmful to the fish population. I don't know anything about that, so I'm not commenting on that part. But what I am saying is that the purpose of those giant stones was to blockade people from doing something. It was making an impact on those who normally would go from one place to another, these giant boulders on the bottom of the sea were making a, a, a barricade, an obstruction against those who would like to proceed. And so this Resurrection Sunday, I'd like to speak to you about, if you would allow me to, stones that hinder us 
from the power of God. You may say, well, what are you talking about? I'll, I'll get to it. Let's read our text and you'll start to get the feel of it here. Uh, this is the New King James Version. It says in Mark chapter 16 and verse number 1, Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Pray with me here this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, to be able to be in the presence of your spirit here today. I thank you, Lord God, for the fellowship of these precious people that I sense today. I pray that we would unite as a body, that we would unite as a group of believers to worship you, to honor you, to glorify you, and that we would be more than just religious on this Easter. It would be more than just a holiday. But Lord, it would be a, a, an honoring of your power that would be made manifest in our individual lives. We pray this today in Jesus' name. Amen. Stones that hinder us from the power of God. First, I'd like to give you some interesting facts about this text that I think is important for you to recognize. First of all, it was three women who, had, who were willing to approach the tomb when all of the male disciples had fled. <laughs> I think that's significant. I think that tells you sometimes a lot about what's going on in the kingdom of God. That sometimes as men, we're leaders. Sure, that's it. But the truth is there's lots of ladies that are doing things powerful for God. And here, all the men had taken off, but three ladies come up. They want to see where Jesus is at, bringing spices to anoint him. These three women were from diverse backgrounds, which tells us a lot about what it means to be a Christian. You don't have to be one race or one nationality. You don't have to be one type of personality. God uses quiet people. He uses loud people. He uses older people. He uses younger people. God is looking for people who worship him with light skin and dark skin and all colors in between. God loves people who come from the continent of Africa as well as Europe, North America, South America, anywhere in the world that diverse people God uses. And we should rejoice in our diversity. We should be excited about the fact that we get to worship God uh, with people from other places. That's a good thing. And that's what was going on here. First of all, we have this woman, her name is Mary, mother of James. This might have been Jesus' mother. Most of us think it is, but we don't have solid facts on that. But we do know that this same woman, Mary, the mother of James, and James was uh, uh, Jesus' brother in a sense, we see that uh, she was also present at the crucifixion of Christ, which gives us a lot of leaning to think that this is his mother because, uh, you know, a mother's always there in the time of her son's need, always there to help her children out. So you had a woman that was weeping and a woman who was mourning and a woman who was doing whatever it took uh, to make sure that her son's final days were going, or final uh, resting place was going to be as it should. Then we have this woman, Salome, who is often referred to as the sister of Mother Mary, which gives us some even more credence to the fact that Mary, the mother of James, was actually the mother of Jesus as well. But then we have this third lady, Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was the woman who Jesus had cast out seven devils out of her life. For sure, she had issues, man. Seven demons in her that needed to be uh, removed and cast out. You might be a woman here today with some demons that we need to cast out. With the resurrection power of God, it can be done. You may say, man, my background is bad. I've done a lot of wrong things. Mary Magdalene did too. Mary Magdalene wasn't known socially as one of the uh, social butterflies with social graces. She was kind of raw and roughed. 
And then being that she was raw and rough shows us that she had also some boldness and some confidence. The book of John chapter 20 records the same text that we're read today, and it records it as Mary Magdalene being the first to go to the, to the tomb, that she was bold, she was willing to get out in front. And that's how the kingdom of God is. There's going to be some that are bold. If you're bold, let God use your boldness for his honor and glory. If you're a little timid and you stay back, I understand, but never let that hinder you from doing what you think God should call, has called you to do. I want you to catch this, though. All three of these women, they were willing to approach Jesus while it was still dark. They could not see. They didn't know what was going on. They were walking by faith. See, some people only come to God when they can figure everything out. When things are all sorted out, they can understand everything that's being said. That's why people like religion so much, because you know what you're going to get. Every time the pastor or the leader of the church is going to do the same thing over and over, and you can count on him to be just the same way. But the Holy Spirit and Christians, they walk in the dark. They walk while things uh, are not going the way that they particularly thought that they would. Understand with me today, brothers and sisters, these women were approaching by faith. Do you walk by faith? Do you walk by trust in the Lord? Can you say amen? But they had something else on their mind. And this is what I really want to get to today. The Bible says in verse 3 of our text that they said among themselves, why did they do that? Because they were concerned about it. As they were approaching the tomb, they began to discuss with each other, who rolled away the, the stone from the door of the tomb? See, they knew that Jesus had been put in this tomb. They were well acquainted with that. They knew that the Roman soldiers had been placed there on Saturday night and tried to guard it and tried to protect that uh, dead body of Jesus. And you know, that's kind of like what the world wants to do. Put Jesus in a tomb and put a rock in front of him. Put some guards over there and try to control Jesus. But they were concerned like, we want to go in there and see him. We want to get beyond the stone. We want to get beyond this large rock. See, this large rock represents the blockade that was laid in front of them getting to Jesus. And if you're honest here today, there are blockades in your hearts and in your minds, maybe in your physical life, from getting to the power of God. You wonder why some people seem to get it and other people don't. Some people have joy, but you don't. You seem, some people understand and begin to experience, experience miracles. But for you... It's been a struggle. It's a blockade. Uh, It's a large stone that cannot be ignored. And look it, I've been a Christian a long time. And I can tell you, I'm not ignorant to the fact that the majority of you in here today have some big blockades from the victory between you and the victory of God. There's some things that are hindering you from getting to the place where you know God wants you to be. You know what you should be doing. It's not a big mystery novel for you. You know what the Lord expects of you. And yet, there's this big stone, blockades to the connection with Jesus that you need to make. Now, I don't want to take all kinds of time just discussing different types of stones, different kinds of blockade, but I do want to just talk about one And you can extrapolate this and say, well, maybe that particular thing he's talking about doesn't apply to me, but I have other stones. I get that. That's fine. But let me speak about one stone that is prevalent in people's life from time to time. Some people, it's in their life for a long period. Others, not so long, but it's there on occasion during different times. And that's the stone of unforgiveness, of unforgiveness. I know Christians talk about this a lot, but you know, we should talk about it more because a lot of people have unforgiveness in their life, in their attitudes, in the way that they are. They struggle to let bygones be bygones. It keeps rearing its ugly head, these slights and these wrongs that have been done to you. And it comes in different ways. Again, and I want to make this clear because for some of you, 
it, it, it's a real like issue, you know, where you're just constantly feeling this thing like you just hate that person. You just dislike that person. Every time you see them, you get upset over and over again. If you're a stubborn person, you're, you're a lot like that. But then there are some of us who maybe not that extreme, but you hold a grudge. There was a grudge that went on. Something happened and you still have not let go of that thing. And you look at it as, well, you're just holding your ground. You believe you were right. And I totally understand that. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, a passionate man. I, when I think I'm right, I think I'm right. I know how you feel. But I think there's a, a, a difference between thinking and believing you're right and holding a grudge against another person because of your stance, because of what you've done. And that's when it becomes a stone, a barrier, a blockade. And people who have this stone of unforgiveness, they, 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 they lack something that, that I've thought about a lot. I've wrote in my devotionals a lot of time. It's something I call the power of the overlook. The power of the overlook. Matter of fact, say that word overlook. One more time. See, there's a power in being able to overlook something. The word overlook in the uh, way that I'm uh, expressing it here means to ignore or disregard something. It means to pass over something. And I thought this was really interesting, maybe coincidental, maybe it's a God thing, I'm not sure, but... We're celebrating the Passover is what we're doing here, the Old Testament Passover, and Jesus is the Passover lamb. And you remember that the blood was put on the doorpost of the people's uh, house and in the Old Testament, and the destroying angel, when it came over, it passed over those who had the blood of the lamb, and the ones who didn't have the blood of the lamb were destroyed. You remember that? And that's symbolic about Jesus, that his blood, uh, uh, we have eternal life because we've been passed over from, from, from death into life. And so I think like when you overlook something, that someone's done something wrong to you, that's moving you from death to life. We look at it like we're giving up something. We look at it as like, well, we, we're not making a hard stand on what we really believe and I get it, sometimes we need to make hard stands, and it's, it's a subjective sometimes. But nevertheless, if you're honest with yourself, you know when you have not overlooked something, but there is power in overlooking. There's power in saying, I forgive you. There's power that happens when you begin to lay something aside and allow God to take over your life. See, what I'm trying to get at before we move on here is that whatever your stone is, if it's unforgiveness, if it's greed, if it's so many things we could mention, no matter what it is, you're like these women. You need someone to roll away that stone because you can't do it on your own because you're listening to me and you're going, yep, yep, I agree, yep, that's me. I, you know, if you were honest, you'd be raising your hand going, yep. But in your heart, you're going, yeah, but what do I do? How do I stop this? How do I stop my feelings? You need someone to roll that away. You need someone to move that stone. You need someone to open up the door of the tomb of your heart to allow the power of God to radiate and resonate inside of your life. And I want to tell you that Jesus offers that to us today. But first, before we get to that, you have to answer the question, what obstacles do you have in your life that are stopping you from connecting with Jesus? What obstacle is hindering you from getting to that next level? I don't want to take a lot of time in this because people think and they've said I, I pick on them with this and I'm not picking on you. But I want to tell you, some of you should be in ministry. You know you should be in ministry. You're born to minister. You're born to work. You're born to do something for God. You don't even have to know exactly what it is because, look, it, it always changes. I'm a preacher right now, but I could easily be a camera operator or an usher or a church cleaner. It doesn't really matter what the job title is. It's just ministry. It's doing something for God, born to do that. And some of you, that applies to you, but there are stones that have stopped you from getting to that point. There are ladies in here. You should be like Mary Magdalene. And I'm saying this with love and compassion, but as your pastor, I want to say to you, 
We have to follow the word of God. We have to identify with disciples. We have to be like disciples, not the religious people of the world, but the radical Christ followers of the word. (laughs) I feel like I'm being real animated here this morning, but I mean what I'm saying. So who will roll away the stone of your heart? The truth be told, many people try to roll their stone on their own. They try to do it their own way. They use their own power and techniques. And the reason is because you know that there's something better on the other side. You know, if you could just get over the stubbornness, you, you know there's something good. You, you might try to convince yourself that you're okay, but inside you know you'd be better off if you let that go. Some of you have pornography problems. You know, you constantly falling back into pornography and that is a hindrance in your life. And you know it's wrong. You, you feel guilty after you do it and you just want to uh, get away from it and you really want to get beyond. But it's like a stone and you're wondering, how can this happen? How can I do it? You might try on your own but fail over and over. And we could just make the list of whatever and whenever these stones occur But I want to tell you today that if you keep trying on your own, it's not going to work out. And a lot of times what we do is we try to do things that we say to move away these blockades and barriers to God. But really, they're just like like putting, in America, we'd say put a Band-Aid on it. But it's putting a plaster over it. It's like putting a cover. It's like painting over, you know, a, a, a dirty wall. Eventually, it just starts bleeding through, doesn't it? And that's what happens with so many many people's lives. They start to strike up relationships. And what do I mean by that? It could be with men or with money. Some of you ladies, you know, you think if you get the right man, yeah, then everything will be good. And you try that guy and you find out he's a jerk like the last guy who was a jerk. And now you've got a whole uh, uh, list of names of jerks. But but you're going to try one more time, you know. And you think that's going to solve it. and, And it just isn't. We think money is going to do it. If I had more money, then life would be calmer because a lot of my pressure is is bills. A lot of my pressure is money. But yet we find that so many people who are wealthy beyond our imagination commit suicide. You know why? Because it doesn't help. Their marriages bust apart. Their families are torn apart. Money is okay, and it's okay to have more money, and we should. it's okay to even pursue a pay rise. But look, at, if you think that's going to roll away the stone and get you into the resurrection power of God, you've got another thing coming, brother and sister. And I'm just saying this to you honestly. You say, wow, this doesn't sound like an Easter service, man. I, I thought we were going to talk about chocolate bunnies and things, you know. And Well, I, I want you to connect with the real God. The God that loves you, the God that wants to work in your life and do something beyond what he's already accomplished in your life. No matter how many times the others in your life try to tell you, you need to sort this out. This is a problem in your life. This is blockading you from great things. Oftentimes it still never gets done because you haven't laid down your pride yet. You haven't admitted that you played a part in that stone coming into play. You, you, you did something there, you know. And we're, we're never going to get anywhere until we admit that. You know, one of the things that's happened to me in the last year has been a confrontation with who I really am and who I really want to be. You know, and I don't want to say that my, all my life before has been a, 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 a fabrication. And that's absolutely not true. But there's been revelation that's happened in the last several months to begin to expose and to uh, begin to bring to forefront and bring into the light of what's really going on in here, what my real motivations for doing things are. And, you know, it's been a, a wonderful experience because even though it might be slightly painful, bringing it before God is saying, God, uh, 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 can you deal with this? And he says, now I can. Now I can help you. Now I can move on your behalf because you've laid aside some pride. And I got to tell you, I'm not the only one in this house that's like that. We've all been there. These women were coming and coming to Jesus. They weren't perfect. They were diverse backgrounds, different age brackets. You're going to see later on that even the men who ran away, they were fearful. They should have hung in there. They should have been at the forefront of the line to begin to anoint Jesus' body. You're going to see even there, they begin to experience the resurrection power of God once they came into contact with who they really were and I'm asking you today 
that this stone that is blockading you from the resurrection power of God needs to be rolled away. How did the stone in our story get rolled away? That can kind of help us a little bit. Matthew tells us, book of Matthew, says that it was an earthquake and an angel that rolled away the stone. I thought about that as I read that, was pondering it, that, you know, so many natural occurrences in life, people attribute to Mother Nature or to just the natural world. And, you know, ever since the 80s, you know, we have had this Carl Sagan. If you don't know who he is, you can Google him. But it's almost like a religion of of science and a religion of the cosmos and uh, connecting uh, uh, what's out there with what's in here. And, you know, really... According to Matthew, this earthquake was tied into the power of God that came through this angel. And so just things that happen that people call natural occurrences sometimes have spiritual impact or are based on spiritual events. So recognize that today. I don't want to get into judgment and all that because I don't believe that COVID is judgment. But I know this, man, that life is not ever going to be the, exactly the same after COVID as it was before COVID. And some of you are like, oh, come on. I want it to get back to normal. It, it'll settle down. But, at the very, uh, but also I want you to know God's involved in, in shaking things up. I've never seen the exposing of sin in the Christian church like I have since 2020. Never. Not only in the world that I live in, but in the Christian church at large. You, you, big names that you and I used to admire are found out to be frauds. And why am I saying that today? Because we're living in a time where natural occurrences are really... Somehow God is intertwined in that. And so this stone that was rolled away was rolled away by the power of an earthquake and the power of an angel. In other words, it was supernatural. Supernatural. But the question is today, can you see what the power is behind the rolling away of this stone? Can you recognize that it was going to take more than an earthquake for all of this to happen? It was going to be required that they begin to see that the power of God is what rolled away the stone. You have to recognize today that you, what you need is the power of God. And what I mean is not a sit there and do nothing kind of thing like, okay, God, if you're powerful... Get on with your bad self, you know. Go, go on, you know. Do what you do. God, you, that's not what it's talking about. It's saying, wow, God, I realize that what I have in my heart, the things that I'm going through, I need you. And I'm seeking you. And I'm coming after you. I'm not just coming to church to listen. I'm coming to church to hear and receive. I'm reading your word, not just to go through my daily grind, but to be able to know things and to be able to receive things and to be able to connect with the power of God because this stone has to be rolled away. I can't live like this any longer. I'm not going to live like my parents lived. I'm not going to live like my grandparents lived. I'm not going to equate myself with my peers or my generation. I was called for more. And that's the same for you. There are young people within the sound of my voice that you know that you've been called for more. God has a plan in your life. You might feel boxed in by your religious parents or your religious family and say, I don't want any part of that. I want to tell you, you don't have to have any part of that. You can have the power of God. You can have God operating supernaturally in your life and through your life. That is wonderful truth today. I want you to enjoy your pastor. I want you to be glad you have me as your pastor. I want you to do all the things that you need to do with a pastor and a disciple relationship. But I want to tell you this. You don't even need a pastor to get the supernatural power of God. God wants to work inside your life. God wants to work in who you are. Hopefully your pastor guides you in that. But God is operating in your life. But that stone has to be rolled away has to be rolled away. It doesn't mean it's going to go away permanently and be, you know, never an issue in your life, but it means I'm rolling it away today to be able to see the power of God. So the solution here, let's get to this. How do we operate as a, in a solution in our lives? 
It is found in the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 23. And I need to move very quickly here. Mark, chapter 11, verse 23. We're talking about stones. We're talking about rocks. We're talking about earth. It says, For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, it says, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Do you get the power that's in there? Do you feel the power that's in there? Your role in getting the the stone rolled away from your life uh, is that you trust in his abilities to do so. You trust in his abilities to be able to get that job done. You put confidence that whatever it is that's blockading you from God, blockading you from supernatural power, he's going to sort it out. He may sort it out in a minute or he may sort it out in a millennium. But whatever the case may be, you trust in that. And you're cool with that. You're all right with that. Does that make sense? I hope so, because it's scripture. And here's how faith operates. Here's how trust and confidence operates. Book of Mark chapter 11, verse 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. See, I want to tell you, there's some people that pray, they don't believe anything. There's some people that pray and say, they pray in kind of with the attitude, I hope that you'll do this for me. And if you could really kind of see your way clear, you know, it might be good. And if you can't do this, I'll take this. Here's my second choice. <laughs> you know, that, that's not biblical at all. The Bible tells us if we're going to deal with stones, move mountains, so to speak, not literal mountains, not literal stones, but spiritual mountains, spiritual stones, then it's going to require us to believe that he's moving them. That when we pray, it's it's working. He's already doing it. And your eyes are open and you can't wait for to see that opportunity. It may come in small increments. Who knows? Who cares in that sense? All we care is that we obey God and that we have faith and trust in him. The Bible tells us that these three ladies, as they were asking their questions, uh, uh, going up to to the tomb and looking and wondering about this big stone they were going to encounter. The Bible says in verse 4 of our text, it says, but when they looked up, the stone was rolled away. Now, it didn't happen at the same time, but I believe that there's a connection between them looking up, them having eyes of faith, them having trust in God. They looked up. They weren't down here like, what do you think is going to happen? What are we going to do with that stone? How are we going to deal with that stone? Man, this stone, we know that there's a problem. What's going to happen? But then when they looked up, the stone was rolled away. Their attitude went from being earthly to being spiritual. My God, if there's one thing I could ask of the Lord for the people of God that I pastor, is that they'd become spiritual people. That they would say, you know what, I want to know God in a spiritual way and not be concerned with the petty and the minor and the things that are not quite as important as the spiritual. Because this is of utmost importance when they looked up. Faith in God moves the stones of our hearts. I know that sounds so cliche-ish, but there's so much power in that. There's so much Bible truth in that. There's so much resurrection power that raised him from the dead. These ladies were getting a precursor of what they were going to experience. the, The fact that the stone was rolled away, it was rolled away by the resurrection power that lifted Jesus from the dead. The stone in your life is going to be removed by the same power here. Can you say amen? Let's give the Lord a big hand clap today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, O God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Stand to your feet with me here this morning. It's now slightly afternoon, and we're going to pray together. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, maybe there's someone that's coming to church today. You're not born again. If you say, well, I don't know what born again is, then you're not. Then you're not. I don't mean that rudely. I just want to be honest with you because you can't get something unless you know where you're at. You can't get to a place unless you know what it, what it is. If you're not born again, you're not born again. And so you need to be born again because John 3 tells us that you must be born again to be in the kingdom of God to enter into heaven. 
The Bible goes on to explain that that happens through Jesus Christ and us believing in Jesus. Not believing that Jesus existed, but believing in what he did was for you personally. And that's what makes Christians kind of different from the rest, not better or superior, just different in that we are uh, uh, saved and born again because of what he's done. We have a personal relationship with him. And that's what he wants to do for you. You might have been in church all your life. Man, I've met so many people through the years. They were raised in church. They sang all the same songs I sang in church as a young Christian. But their lives were on two, and my life was on two different paths. Because they never really had that real personal relationship with Jesus. Some of our pastors can testify to that very fact that when they were young lads, they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. It wasn't until that encounter with the power of God. And if you maybe are at home and you haven't experienced it, God wants to help you today. And we want to pray with you. So if you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, I admit that I've sinned. I know that I'm wrong, but I want to be right in your eyes. I accept you, Jesus, that you died on the cross, that your blood was shed for me personally, and that I can have new life by the Holy Spirit. I believe this today. I trust this today. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, maybe you got a stone, you know, and it's no sin to admit it because look at it's like when you go to the doctor and you say something to the doctor and you're going to be embarrassed to tell the doctor and he just kind of nonchalantly blows it off. You know why? Because he's seen it so many times. He knows all about it. So I want to tell you, when you tell me that you have a stone by, you know, coming up, I want to tell you, I get it. <laughs> I've had stones. I know what it's like to have unforgiveness. I know what it's like to have these other problems and situations. And you know If you're real, you've had it too. And maybe God is speaking to you. Hey, get on with his power. Get on with ministry. Get on with the call. Get on with the things that he has for your life. God's speaking to you about rolling away the stone. Speaking to you about entering into a life of faith. Believing once again. Come on up to the front. Let's pray. Come on up. Take some time and just come and stand at the front. I'm going to pray with you today. Lord's going to help you. Lord's going to bless you. Your step of faith is something. If you're coming up with a religious walk, not going to help. But if you're coming up with that walk that says, man, I I, I do want him. I do want him. Good things are going to happen. Anybody else want to join this crew? Anybody else want to come today? Come on down. God can help you. God can help you. You can come on up in this area as well. Don't feel free. Don't worry. Praise God. If you're not making the altar call, if you're not coming up to the front, stretch forth your hands. Do this. All you back there, do this. Do this. We're going to believe. Those that are at the front here, lift your hands to the Lord. We're going to get these stones rolled away. The power of God is going to help us today. Heavenly Father, we just come before you today in the name of Jesus, in the resurrection power of God. Lord, we admit that we have stones. Uh, We admit that there's things blocking us from you, uh, things that we've allowed to enter our lives, things that are going to stop us from proceeding any further. And Lord, we trust that you're able to miraculously work in our lives today. Lord, every hindrance we put aside, uh, every obstacle we leap over in faith, uh, we believe right now that they're gone, that you're dissolving them, that you're miraculously working, that you're providing, oh God, that you're meeting every need, Lord God. And today we praise you and we worship you and we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're doing today. And we give you the praise, the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap today. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. If you've been blessed or challenged by today's preaching and you'd like to get in touch with us, the easiest way is via our website at www.newharvestuk.com. You can email us at info at newharvestuk.com or look us up on Facebook or Twitter. You can call us on 0161 278 6305 or you can even write to us at 194 Chapel Street, Salford, 
Manchester M36BY. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome for you to join us at any of our services. However you might be feeling, and whatever you might have been told, know this. God loves you, and there's a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you, we're praying for you, and once again, thank you for listening.